anyways, we'll welcome the guest to uh, September's rendition of Mikey's board webinars, MB webinars, as we <laughs> abbreviate everything in this industry. And we've been uh, trying to get together with Damon for quite some time now. This has been a uh, definitely a work in process, and one thing after another led to us having to cancel. And even at the last minute, we had to bump it to tonight versus uh, tomorrow night due to uh, my daughter putting too much work on the schedule, and I'm so slow and old and decrepit these days doing that uh, that hot water extraction process at about two feet per hour. So <laughs> here we are on Tuesday night. <laughs> uh, we got our, our guest host, the master of VLM, Mark Sager, who I don't even think owns a 175, let alone a bonnet or, I, or a I gallon. Bonnets, of bonnets, and I still have my old RX-20 for weight. It's a little too fast, but I compromise. <laughs> he has an old sponge somewhere in the van. <laughs> but Mark, uh, having virtually virtually no experience at VLM, has, a, has an interesting story to tell uh, at some point tonight of, of why he doesn't offer low moisture cleaning, which is to me more interesting as, you know, why someone would. Uh, but let's, Damon, let's start with you. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't know all these people that are on here tonight, but, you know, you and I were talking about a few minutes ago, but let's give me your uh, elevator speech about how you got into the industry and then how you got uh, a hold of ncapstore.com, the URL, and how you built it up to this point. Okay. Uh, so basically, I worked for years and years in marketing, online marketing and uh, call center work, and uh, I was involved in that for nearly a decade and wanted to try something entirely different and uh, decided to take on the carpet cleaning world, or at least carpet out myself as a operator. I started with a portable. It was actually a Mighty M12, and uh, it wasn't a bad machine, but loading, unloading taking upstairs when necessary, the hookup, autofill, auto dump was way too much for me. And I decided to look at alternatives and started exploring low moisture, um, initially through the forums, uh, specifically through Backaway. And I started using a 175 for a while, uh, but then I quickly graduated to a machine. That was an Orbot. Damon, work. keep your mic uh, close. You're fading Is that better? In. Okay. Uh, so I settled on an Orbot and actually ended up with two Orbots and then eventually a uh, CRV and then a Steam and Demon and prior to that um, a little spotting and a full stream machine and uh, I've had great results with VLM. I, I really like the method. Um, I understand there are a lot of dual method cleaners out there and I think that's great too, obviously. So but, you got um, in, in Las Vegas, you weren't cleaning in, the, in California? No, 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 no. I've been in Las Vegas since 2001. I've been here for quite a while. So how did, how did initially you decide to get into the carpet cleaning business? I just wanted to do something different, something that will get me more physical, more active. I'm pretty good at customer service, I like to think. And how did you and, pick carpet um, cleaning? You, you could have gone in a thousand Why others. does anybody pick carpet cleaning? I don't know. I, I didn't give you a, did you know somebody? Yeah. Were you having your carpets cleaned? No. Yeah, we've right? had that. Yeah, we've had our carpets cleaned. Um the past we've had unreliable cleaners and experiences where it's taken too long to clean um, or to dry rather mediocre results and that's certainly been part of it and uh, that was one way where I thought where I could do better especially in terms of the service um, I've always had in the past I used to call carpet cleaners never really felt like I was getting the accurate price over the phone or not even a specific price obviously an idea of how much it might cost if I can get someone out to get an estimate. I just never felt like it was done the right way. I'm not saying I do it the right way. You never but experienced I just, uh, things I could do better. What's that? You never experienced the Mikey and Mark level of cleaning, in other words. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe I was calling the wrong guys. I don't know. But uh, yeah. I just felt maybe I could do something a little better. And then, again, I started with the portable and you know, it was okay. Porties can clean, they can work, but I wanted it to be a little different. But BLM would give me that edge, and it has. So you found out about low moisture through the backaway forum? No, it was actually through uh, forums in general, whether it be yours, uh, TMF, and then I then I found out about backaway, and then got oh. into backaway pretty heavily. Okay, that's kind of a hidden forum. It's not. It is. It is, and so is Excellent Supply, and 
Yeah. What was the other one? Uh, U.S. Cleaners not even around anymore. I mean, those three yeah. kind of make up the VLM. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Hmm. But that so, started with you. Did you ever get to the point in that business where you were cleaning five, six days a week all day long? Uh, yeah. I mean, I was never doing like seven, eight, nine jobs a day, but I would stay busy five, six days a week. Absolutely. I'd always try to take Sundays and Mondays off, ideally. Uh -huh. Definitely Tuesday through Saturday I'm working. Okay. Um. <laughs> and then in-cap store? Oh, what was I going to say? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I watched in the original in-cap store grow to, to what it was. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And Damon, or uh, sorry, Jeremy, take off, you know, and just kind of let it die off. And, you know, it's a great URL, but that's kind of what you bought, right? Correct. Right. You bought a snazzy URL and not much more. Correct. And, and just looking at your website, uh, you got a forum on here? Oh, it goes, oh it's just a link it's, to the Backway forum. Okay. Cool. I was about ready to hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... I mean, I've watched you every step of the way develop uh, your site and develop your Facebook page. And, I mean, from the outside in, it looks like you're doing really well. I mean, I don't know how much chemical and pads you're doing, but you seem to have a very active Facebook page that stays almost drama-free, except when a couple of machine manufacturers show up. And it seems that everybody's very helpful. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's been a lot of work. I, more work than I anticipated. I don't know if Mark can speak to this as well at this point you know it's, it's a lot to do when you have a you a find surprises every you find day a lot of surprises you're spending a lot of money uh what you and i talked about mikey earlier is important and that's that you know i stock a lot of items too i'm not just a drop shipper yeah and, uh, that's a big difference so i'm dealing with ups i'm dealing with processing orders finding lost orders packing boxes unpacking boxes uh ordering supplies whether packing supplies, the actual product itself, finding new products to, to sell. So it's been a lot. It's been more than I anticipated, I'll say that. So you have um, your own lineup of chemicals. I'm looking here, you know, awesome end cap and uh, flagship products. Flagship products. So when you go to a new distributor, Procyon or uh, name another one. Yeah, name uh, another. We have a lot. I mean, there's Procyon, there's Excellent Supply. Uh, back away, Judson for the hot water yeah. extraction, and uh, so when you go to them, hey, I want to sell your stuff, and they hear that you already have a line of products. Does it take much convincing to uh, to no. get them? No, I mean it's no different than John Don or any other distributor that has their own products. Um, Sager, are you answering this guy wanting a, a call-in number? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. I got that. Sorry. And thanks yeah. for shutting my mic off there earlier. I missed that button, but I keep an eye on it. That's a call-in number. That's funny. Larry King Live. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, you know, I think it's no different. I mean, obviously, I'm going after a niche market, so that always makes things a little interesting. Okay. So yeah, your product kind of is made by one vendor in particular or a multiple? Multitude of vendors. Uh, actually, yeah, there's a few different. Oh, cool. We don't need to discuss that. It's nobody's business. But uh, uh, I've tried a couple of your things, and they, they work as well as anything else, if not a little better. I'll be the first one to say that all the top tier in caps work really well. They do. Um, whether top it be. Tier, what, can you define what a top tier in capper is? In well, I mean, excellent supply, the release at line, I should say, okay. uh, the back away line. Bonapro, I mean, those are three great, uh, pro they all make great products. Uh, the question is finding the right product that works for you. Right. And again, I'm sure Mark could testify to that. I mean, there's a million different hot water extraction pre sprays. Yeah. Some do better than others. Some fill certain niches that others don't. Yeah. It's pretty daring to come out with one more, right? There will be. There will be a, 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 a holiday pre spray to <laughs> fill out the rest of the year. Right now, Mark. Yeah, oh, maybe we need a, a Sager sauce end cap. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> pretty quick with it. I got my hands full. Yeah, Mark's really busy right now, Mikey. That was a bad idea. Anyway, 
in Capsta. So yeah, we uh, got the domain name and uh, rebuilt the website. I mean, literally, we built the entire website. It's still a work in progress. There's a lot I want to do. So yeah. far, not Facebook's. So I looked at your product list. At this point, you got one machine to sell out of, I don't know, a dozen or so machines. That, at least a dozen that could be considered, you know, NCAP or VLM machines. So Absolutely. I Correct. You to grow that list. Yes. Um, I, that list will grow. Not by much, though. Not by much. I mean, it's easy to kind of get overwhelmed with machine choices. So I'm not going to go crazy with yeah. that. Now, didn't you tell me you worked out something with uh, Carpet Cleaner America and their their uh, correct? If you matter of fact, if you look at one of the uh, images I sent you, you'll see the uh, Brushmatic, which is my my CRB is that or my your name? Little Brushmatic. Brushmatic. Yeah, that's good. That hasn't been used before. Yeah, I don't think it has. I put a lot of time trying to figure out a name for it, and yeah, <laughs> that was the one I came up with. So hopefully not. Hopefully okay. I won't get a phone call or a letter. From Sager Industries, told me to stop. Yeah. Okay, so you you you. In other words, you went from a, a pain in the ass portable, which which nobody likes cleaning with a portable. You know, you do it out of necessity. Either you're just starting out, you don't have any funds to buy a truck mount, or you're doing uh, like. I was risk adverse to it. I was risk adverse to it. Yeah, uh, and there's nothing yes. fun about it. You know, no flow, no heat, no vacuum. It's just. <laughs> It sucks, in other words. So you moved on to, to low moisture, which is certainly way easier, and you're getting you know as good results, if not better. And then what? You kind of got sounds like you got a little distracted and hoping to uh, make your nest eggs mining the miners instead. Which I, don't um, I thought it was a good opportunity. I actually heard about Incap Store through another cleaner, a friend of mine, and um, he's the one that turned me on to it. I didn't even talk to Jeremy before. I talked uh, about buying it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of how it started. And then it just got uh, bigger and bigger. I'm still doing some work. This is taking up a lot more of my time. <laughs> that's fun, though. I mean, yeah. I like talking to cleaners. I like helping. You better like that's talking good. to cleaners, right, Mark? Yeah, Mark knows. Yeah, if you're selling to the, the internet oh, crowd, whether they're bookers or bulletin boarders, uh, they like to talk. You know? <laughs> it's not – these are not the guys that show up at the – the stores, you know, the supply shops, and do their shopping in five minutes and boogie out of there. Um, all right, so that's your history. Mark, you want to give your two-minute history in uh, low-moisture work? And Actually, I'm more interested in why you don't do it, which I think is, is a fascinating case study. <laughs> well, uh, my brother does it, and so we are not uh... – not, a, of course, opposed to it. We actually embrace it. But in my area, I have a gentleman who is a low moisture padding person. And he's kind of the only one that does it. And so kind of out of respect. He's more of a part-time kind of a friend. So out of more respect, I've kind of passed that kind of work to him. And uh, a lot of the time... What is, what is that kind of work? What do you, how do you, uh, you go to a job... He, yeah. An estimate. How do you define? Oh, this is better off for my friend. Is it well, uh, our high rise here. We are now up to three stories tall in Grand Rapids. I'm telling you, we're killing it here. <laughs> so, <laughs> for me, it's simple. Throw a hose out and clean. So I don't pass on too many jobs to feed the family and table and stuff. But there is every now and then you'll get into a case of something that you just know is going to be a problem for you know, a long distance hose into the center of a building or something, and or it's going to be a problem just hot water extracting. It's going to be a wick back nightmare problem, and, you know, you're just like, this guy's got the equipment. I How about if we just get him in here? Um, and you know what the thing is? He charges about the same rate as I do, so he's padding at about the same rate of per square foot as I am. So... He's doing well for just part timing it. You and, uh, padding, do you mean a, an OP or 175? Yeah. Uh, well, he's more 175 ish. Yeah, he's more of a 175 in pads and stuff. Yeah. So you've never really used the Cymex? No, my brother owns the Cymex in our family, and uh, I do enjoy the Cymex. I just I don't have a lot of facilities that I need the Cymex for. 
but if I do, I can just like get it quick within like two, three hours. I'd have it here, or you know, I plan ahead. Um, I like doing Cymaxing. Like we just had an example, not here, but another person sending me messages, and um, they were, I think, using a portable in a building or something. I'm like, well, do you own a Cymax? Why aren't you Cymaxing that cow trail? I mean, that's just the best thing to do. You're not going to get that no matter how hard you try. It's going to you're going to finish that off way better with some type of a uh, Cymax or an OP. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're a believer in it. I don't have as much in my area that uh, we can or get requests for that type of low moisture. But I do have some um, facilities that I'm waiting for to get back. And if that happens, I might be grabbing a some type of OP or Cymex for in elder care facilities because some of the cleaning could be at night. It's still going to require some hot water extraction uh, during a year, but also there's a great opportunity for a maintenance program for us. And if that's the case, uh, we're going to be updating some equipment. So I'll be talking to Damon. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'll be an IPS sprayer, but you'll get a Cymex out of it. So. Well, and maybe even the pads too. I mean, because... <laughs> you know, he's got a great variety of pads going on there. I mean, I can't keep up to everything he's got there. And he is definitely the expert on this. So wow. I'm going to the expert. I will. I do yeah. sell it. Expert so you're you're going to have to start bringing three vans to every job. One of them just has Cynexes in it. Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, I'd really love to actually have something like that. It'd be so cool just to be wheeling them things out. <laughs> so... There's that one guy used to tow tow a Cymex around on a handicap bumper trailer. He, he did it all the time. It was always hanging off the rear end. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's uh, Gordon uh, Skurseth, who my parents, my dad helped get started many years ago in North Dakota. Yep, and it's yeah. Gordon. He's got a cool van set up there. Ty's yeah. one upping me. He said he had three trucks today on a job on a funeral home. And that dog, and he's got a longer beard than both of us. Yeah, it's too hot for Arizona. Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll give a little bit of my end cap history in that, you know, I started as a portable guy. I moved into truck mounts for 13 or more years, started my own biz and finding the boards. I think the first low, low moisture piece of equipment, well, I, I've always had a 175, always, always, but never really used it for anything other than pre-scrubbing for hot water extraction. But uh, I think I fell into the oh, – Damon, what's the name of the, the, the first uh, counter-rotating brush company that's still around? Whitaker. Whitaker. Yeah, I fell into the Whitaker trap, you know, and, and bought their machine, which we still run today, uh, whatever that is. Uh, it lasts forever. Later. Yeah, 15 years later, and you know, it's all banged up. It still spins, and – I'm not so sure we could get the brushes off anymore because <laughs> they're never lubed enough, but we still use it almost every day, either pre-scrubbing. Uh, but I found that they just were too light for heavy-duty end cap work. You know, even uh, even if you loaded them up with bricks and weights like Paul Brown does, it just didn't scrub. So I went looking for something more. I found the Cymex, and now we own three of them. And, you know, I've had a couple of OPs, you know, we've tried with just, a, you know, 175, but I just, my experience, nothing out hides the dirt like a Cymex. There's certainly machines that move quicker and will even things out, but the clean line that you can make with a Cymex, it's hard to duplicate with even a truck mount. Um, you know, ours get used on a monthly basis, certainly not a daily basis. But we have uh, what I call daytime commercial accounts. We don't do anything, you know, after 6 o'clock unless we're running late. Uh, do a lot of Saturday jobs. We do some restaurants and colleges and doctor's offices, lawyer's offices, that sort of stuff. But much like Sager, uh, we only got one building over three stories in Santa Cruz, and that's, you know, it's an apartment building. There's, there's just very little commercial. You couldn't run a nightly, a nightly route there. But uh, we tried all the juices and every pad out there, and we kind of found what we like, and we stick with it. And every once in a while, we, we alternate, and we'll do some hot water extraction and all, but a couple of those jobs where it's just physically impossible. And we have some where they've been Cymexed 25, 30 times, and they keep calling back. You know, I know that we could uh, get them brighter if we ran a zipper or, you know, 
mega flow wand over there, but just not doable. And we're getting the spots out. And ultimately, that's what most people care about, not, not necessarily how bright it is. Mikey, um, how about that uh, with that uh, dining hall I mentioned in the past? Oh, oh, the Hall of Fame dining hall. Yeah, that was uh, that was a uh, sort of a Bible camp. They served six hundred meals three times a day. It's that big during the season, during the summer. Huge, huge camp. Mount, what's it called? Mount Hermon. And they had a, a, a large janitorial closet there that was kind of like going to Judson's facility. It's a carpet cleaners hall of fame. And they have every walk behind, every portable, uh, all sorts of renditions of 175s, uh, dual cylindricals. I mean, they've had virtually everything in there but the truck mount and the Cymex. And that's what they called me to come out and demo. So we cut the we cut one of the small dining rooms into thirds, and I did Cymex only on one area because they wanted to see. You know, they're willing to pay and do whatever, but they wanted to see what method was going to work best. You know, the guy was no dummy. He was uh, very well versed. He, he stood around, watched the whole time, asked very intelligent questions, and knew what was going on. Anyway, so we Cymex one area. We used a rotor extractor hooked to whatever Vortex in one area, and then we also did a, uh, a rotor back, or sorry, a rotor extractor and a post padding. So try and speed dry it, get some more soil out. And yeah, I charge a minimum charge, come out there and do a couple hundred feet of each, and they called back and said, not only did the Cymex area dry looking the best, but you know, obviously there's, there's a more, most affordable. But this was tile, tile carpet that they just could no longer uh, afford to staff themselves to, to clean it. Um, they could keep up on it, but they couldn't do the deep cleaning. But it was it was a tortured carpet. We had to pre-spray it all, you know, triple concentrate, put straight ammonia down in a lot of the entry areas, and Cymex over and over, and then post pad with cotton pads. And, you know, we walked out of there with a stack of pads three feet tall, and every one of them looked like a Michelin tire. And they called us back, you know, a few more times to do it until we had one mishap where they put the wrong day on the schedule. And they got really pissed off because they moved everything out of there. And we haven't heard back since then. So I don't know if they're just waiting because it wasn't that long ago. Or they're going to look for someone else with a Cymex in town. As far as I know, we're the only ones that have one in, in the Santa Cruz area. But uh, that was, uh, Damon likes that story, so I'm going to tell it. <laughs> Favorite story. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's my history. We still do it. I got a, you know, I got all the same machines over here in Nevada. Um, I was asking Damon for some advice on another restaurant I got coming up because I'm, I'm not opposed to uncapping a restaurant if it, if it looks good. It's generally going to stay looking good just with with whatever method. Restaurants get filthy quick, so if I can make them look good for a little while longer, you know, with any method and do it a little cheaper and with less headache. It looked uh, pretty good that last Cymex run. Do you have a picture of that you can post? Yeah, I'd have to dig it up, but yeah, I'll find it. Um, so, Damon, I was asking you, you know, let's talk a little bit about the history of NCAP. There I go again, stroking my beard. You know, yeah. the, the whole industry started with low moisture shampoo, which, you know, we could still call NCAP shampoo. It's just a buzzword. Bonnet cleaning. Bonnet cleaning, whatever. It started with it, and now more than ever, it seemed to have come full circle. There, there's more low moisture guys out there, more alternatives, more machines, more chemistry more acceptance of it than ever before. Do right. you agree? Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yet the companies that are offering the equipment and the chemicals and whatnot seem to be taking a very low key approach. And like I asked you, is why are none of them other than Carpet Cleaner America, who have their Austrian funding, showing up to the biggest carpet cleaning event? In well, the world? I mean, if, in fairness, last year Rick was at the experience. Uh, he did have his booth. Uh, this year, like you said, Carpet Cleaner America will be there. Um, but Rick sees no return on it. You know, he, he's looking for immediate return. He wants to place orders. And most of the companies there know it's not a, a show to go there and make sales. It's a no to, it's a show to go and build your brand and, you know, spread the word. It's, you know, you can't come home and expect a bunch of orders, you know, eventually. Low moisture is definitely growing acceptance like you mentioned earlier but you know guys like in my opinion I, I mean, and this is strictly my opinion based on observation um 
Lucid, Vacaway, Bonapro, you know, they still, despite the growth of ELM, serve a niche market. Because a lot of guys will get their in cap from Interlink or John Don or the little supply house. Um, you know, as opposed to, to going to back away, et cetera. They, they just aren't aware. So I, I agree. I mean, to have a bigger presence uh, with everyday cleaners is important. Some How many uh, low moisture franchise opportunities are there now? Oh, there's OxyFresh, uh, uh, Heaven's is, Best. OxyFresh is Brush Pro. Uh, Heaven's Best is just like that. So, Oxy Fresh is Brush Pro. Uh, Heaven's Best is a, is just a 175, and those guys have been around for at least 20 years, at least. Um, matter of fact, the one here in uh, Vegas has a two van operation, and if I'm not mistaken, he sold it uh, successfully a couple of years ago. Well, and I'm trying to think what other yeah, VLM. Eric's asking. He Heaven's Best is strictly bonnet cleaning and yeah. 175. They use, and they use uh, I think they do use a portable a spotter for pet issues and sometimes upholstery. Uh, other than that, yeah, they use a they use a 175. They use the uh, world famous tenant Robles. Watch your microphone it. there, Damon. If you're backing away from it again. So, uh, got it. They use the 175 with the green dome. Yeah, and you know they're, they're making enough people happy. You know, like any, you know, the hot water guys can say the same thing. You just got to make a certain amount of people happy. No one's, no one's always, you know, your whole client base. If you made everybody happy, you'd be at 100%. I mean, if they weren't making people happy, if they weren't making a profit, they wouldn't be in business. Yeah. That's the reality of yeah. it. That's what I think you have to accept. Yeah. I'm trying to think what other franchises are besides those two that are strictly low moisture off the top of my head. I mean, I know... Um, Strong Dry, or Kelly Love, I should say, sells business packages, but it's not a franchise. Um, Chem Dry, there you go. Thank you, Mama. But even Chem Dry moved to, uh, they're I think they're doing hot water extraction now, right, with like a 120 yeah. PSI for, uh, truck mount. There's a good photo of Sager's yeah. worst nightmare. I found that one. Um, yeah, what's the one Jasper's connected to? It's not the PCS. They have another franchise that's a low moisture, and they're running out of the back of one of the little tiny uh, green cars. Mm, uh, I don't know. That's news to me. It's a bonnet, some sort of bonnet OP sort of thing. Cool this change, like Rick J said, cool change. Right but that's here. a marketing program. That's not a, a franchise. Isn't that a marketing program? No, no, if it's a whole system you're buying into. You know, yeah, you, but it's not a, it, it's an actual franchise called Cool Change. Cool Change? I thought change. it was a marketing thing with letters. Like, you know, marketing no, letters that's, and all that kind that's of That's not the one I'm talking about. Oh, Todd, green, totally clean. Thank yeah, you, Todd. that sounds right. Yeah, something like that. I don't know if it took off, but there was that option. Um, there was another one up here that someone mentioned. Uh Fabrizone, never heard of that one. Yeah. Anyway, there's more than there's more than a couple of them. There are a few business packages out there. There's one like with an orange. I forget what that one's called. Orange strong, something like that. So. Oh, they're using yeah, they're using it the limonene base. Right. So, so there are these franchise opportunities, and for some reason, the franchisees never show up to the experience. You know, they figure they'd be better off at a. Uh, you know, an entrepreneur convention where people go to figure out if they want to sell sandwiches, batteries, or, or carpet cleaning. You know, they gen I think they generally want to talk to people who have never cleaned carpet and don't have any uh, preconceived ideas of, of how it should be done. And uh, Can you agree on that, Damon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you're going to, if you're an OxyFresh trying to sell franchises or Heaven's Best for that matter, I don't know if you would get a lot of value going to the experience other trade show. I mean, similar to Stanley Steam or Zero Res, for that matter. Yeah. So this, uh, that photo I, I just put up, that's kind of a, is Sager still on or did, did he get muted? I felt, <laughs> I felt kind of bad about this scene. This was a... I'm muted. I'm back. You're back. This is a situation we had at uh, the Atlanta show where 
uh, John Gurkink was there with this monster machine, and you know, I saw this carpet, and I knew it'd be a perfect opportunity to do a, you know, whatever this type, the OP or a Cymex or something, because it, it's really not even carpet; it's doormat materials, thick rubber back, and then just a, a tiny bit of that woven plastic on top. And it's just completely impacted. There's Big John. And, you know, obviously the machine did well, and poor Sager, we put him in charge of cleaning the other half, and I kick myself daily for not handing the wand over to Rob, our buddy Rob Allen, letting him <laughs> deal with the uh, proceeding humiliation that came out of this, because I was hoping John would have just been cool about it and said, hey, yeah, you know, there's, there's a time and a place for everything, and obviously our machine did great, and leave it at that. And instead, he turned it into an opportunity to just beat the living shit out of Sager and I, and it just got really ugly. But uh, the fact of the matter is just three days later, you couldn't even tell the carpet had been gone over, you know, by either method. It was uh, so beyond cleaning. Um, anyway, the carpet Dan, was find, coming up yeah. off the floor from just so much sand and debris underneath the square tiles. So it was, nobody was winning. It yeah. was terrible. Yeah, yeah. So, Damon, what's on your agenda here? You, uh, you sent me some some graphics and whatnot. And yeah, we'll I mean, if you want to bring those up one by one, we can kind of go over them. Just kind of an overview of the different processes. I mean, frankly, this is my first co-hosting duty, so I wasn't really sure what uh, the agenda would be. But I figured we'd talk about some of the new machines that have come out recently. Yeah, there are like was changed. six yeah. six machines now, and uh, machine maybe seven with the brush or the bonnet pro. Little Mo. Mm -hmm. Show Little Mo first. Do you want to go through this? Sure. Why don't you read that? Come on, Dad. Start reading your bedtime stories. <laughs> I mean, out loud, not personally. <laughs> <laughs> Damon's reading it. Brandon, I've got to run. Yes, it will be uploaded to YouTube. You'll find it on Mikey's board probably even tomorrow. The link, same link that got you here. Okay, I'm not sure if we lost Damon or what. I guess I get. I'm here. All right. So encapsulation reply, uh, relies, sorry, on machine agitation and cleaning solutions that contain polymers. Oh, I don't see the image, Mikey. I think we're missing the image. Up you don't there. see it. What do you mean you don't see it? You see it, Mark? I only see Mikey's pictures. To be honest with you. Yeah. My what picture? Your, your pictures little, from your uh, Google account. Photo photo, yeah, from your photo of Google account. That's all we're seeing right now on the main screen. Oh, shit. I, okay. <laughs> Pardon my French. How's that? There we go. That's the that's the right one. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yep. Dang. Okay, you're seeing all my, my vacation pictures. That could have been embarrassing. <laughs> Careful. Go on here. Mikey, Mikey on vacation. Jeez. How'd that one get in there? Yeah. Look at the nudie section there. Uh, so the, the cleaning solution is dispensed via onboard sprayers or gravity feed. The fiber pads or brushes are used to agitate and the cleaning solution into the carpet. Uh, let me stop here. Lion asked earlier if I use brushes or pads. Absolutely, I use pads. And Damon is the only guy I know that sells those, what I call the Oshkosh. Baby poop brown pads. He's got another name for them, but those planetary those... pads. You also call them uh, brownies, which is actually a pretty good name. Yeah, um, they outlast any other pad uh, ten to one. Some of those pads, I think there's more money in selling the pads than there is the juice because they, they wear out every four hundred feet. And they oh, this is uh, an accessory driven industry for sure. Yeah, and yeah, I'll, guys, I'll tell you for I mean, this is no exaggeration. Everybody thinks I'm BSing when I say this, but. I'll somebody call and say, hey, I normally use uh, such and such pads, and you know, I'll get maybe X amount of use out of them. So give me half a dozen cases. And I'll say, you really only need two cases. You can't I'll tell. Say, no, 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 no. So I'll say, trust me. I send them two cases. They call me six months later, and they're still on their first case. That's no joke. That's how this, long they last. This is a hey, Mikey, how long ago did you buy yours? Huh? This is a how truck long? stop up in Oregon. And these, these donuts were the size of those brown pads, man, I'm telling you. You can't tell in this picture, but they were literally. Like you could in cap with those donuts. <laughs> they were two bucks each. They you could huge. actually uh, in cap with those cinnamon rolls. <laughs> uh, where did your uh, where did the little picture go? There it is. Okay. But, yeah, your, your those brown pads, uh, the Cymex, 
dude, I don't know, 4,000 feet or more, I'm guessing? Yeah, I mean, guys have numbers all over the board. It's just always on the high end, I'm telling you. They last Great. three times or five times longer yeah. than the uh, yeah. standard champagne pads out there, regardless yeah, of manufacturer. Yeah. Hopefully Rick's not on here tonight having a heart attack, but even the, the dark gray pads. Yeah, that's, I'm not knocking anybody. I mean, I, I don't want to yeah. do that, but these pads are. Yeah. The only thing that lasts longer than the brown pads is just using the Velcro drivers like Marty likes to do, but if you stand still <laughs> for too long, you end up doing a crop circle on the carpet. But uh, uh, the brown pads are kings. Ricky ought to sell them. Uh, let's see. Polymers capture both detergent and newly freed soil, all of which dry to a brittle crystal. Uh, try the that's, what they say. that's the rumor. Yeah, is removed with routine vacuuming. Uh, the most common tools used for in capping includes the Cymex, along with a variety of oscillating pad, rotary, and CRB machines. Uh, you know. I've told this story more than once, but my wife had a daycare with a nylon pile carpet in the daycare. And every Sunday she would take some of my uh, release it and a little brush that we had. You ever seen that? It's like half a CRB brush mounted with two wheels. Oh, a zebra on the brush. Yeah. yeah. And she would spray down the room, scrub that in, and then Monday vacuum it. And throughout the week, you know, at the end of each day, it had to get vacuumed. She had 12 kids in there. And throughout the week, it'd get better and better looking as the polymer let loose. So I'm a believer in that. It, it does a, you know, offer extended, is that the right word? I like to call it soil inhibitors. Yeah, there you go. I mean, a lot of guys will say, oh, that's a built-in protector. What it really is, is it's a soil inhibitor. Yeah, the stuff flakes yeah. off. Nothing, you know, it's a Scotch guard of sorts. Sword. Where'd you get this graphic here? What's that? Did you make this graphic? Or just I had, this was what we were talking about before with the uh, delay in the first show was having the rest of these made and I got uh, cut off at the pass. It's whole, uh, pretty cool though, right? It could have been great. It would be great if you had a nice, fresh, clean Cymex. This thing looks like it's been underwater for a the couple jalopy. of The jalopy. But that just goes uh, to show you how well they, la how long they last and how well it works. Uh, that is a jalopy. Yeah. I was actually at a, a, a that was at, here in Vegas at a, um, a spa. Uh, as Brian Williams would say, I was there. Uh, oh, I got you. The, uh, the two things that wear on the Cymex is the belt, and that's not too often. And then that little black elbow where the hose goes under the head. That thing needs to be made out of uh, something other than plastic. Other than that, unless you're bouncing them downstairs all the time and crack the frame, which you shouldn't do, nothing really goes wrong. Hey, while well, I'm thinking, Dan, what's your experience with the big wheels on the Cymex? Do you find it's uh, as dramatic as some guys say? Uh, anything helps that can make the machine more mobile to transport and move around. It's worth the investment. How much extra is a big wheel kit? Not much. I mean, how much does it cost to buy it wheel? from Rick? Um, Rick's are fancier, nicer made than the, the Cymex ones. Right. I mean, the uh, big wheels will, will always help. Especially if you're going upstairs, which is rarely the case with a Cymex, but in general, yeah. it just makes mobility. Yeah, it helps a bit. Uh, it does put a little more weight on the head. Ultimately, it's all about the weight, you know. But it's not quite as uh, dramatic as Chavez claims it is, but we'll let him slip on that. I mean, uh, where big wheels come in handy is if you're going up and down stairs. That's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, what does a Cymex weigh? It weighs too much to pick up by yourself. Uh, although I've had a couple technicians do it, and I scream bloody murder at them because it's, you know, they blow their back out. It's going to be me out there doing their job. Uh, I don't know. What's it weigh, Damon? 120 pounds, something like that? I think it's in that neighborhood, yeah. I think yeah. it uh, when they started making it without that casing, it dropped the weight a little bit, but not much. And there's no way that, there's no balance point on it. There's no, like, two spots to ideally put in your hand, that, you know, if you were a big Hulk Hulkster, to lift the thing. It's just, just really, yeah. Well, you should put awkward. your hands uh, pointing at someone else yeah. to lift it. But uh, you can buy a single motorcycle ramp and do a uh, Chinese wheelie of sorts. And if you get a running start, you can get it going on one wheel. I've got it down to a science now that I'm, I'm helperless here in Nevada, and I can wheel it in and out on one wheel, assuming the tank's not full, and it's not too bad. Does that make sense? 
you know. Yeah, and I think there's like a Harbor Freight ramp that a lot of guys use. It's like hundred bucks or something. Yeah, Harbor Freight makes cheap ones. Uh, Cycle Gear makes cheap ones, but you also gotta you know look at the size of your van and can you fit this giant ramp in there? That's true. Um, one just on that nine, weight, I I posted it down there, but it's 170 to 179 according to the John Don website for the weight, just so you know. That's probably right. Is that the, is that the, which side, which Cymex is that? Like it's, uh, that was the bigger one here. It was the, uh, the Cyclone 19 inch, excuse me, 19 inch. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. It's about as awkward as picking up a dead body. You're not getting any help with it. Uh, so Damon, you know, the pad, you got a pad graphic here, and pads, the science behind these things just never stops changing. And uh, back before your day, back in the blue board days, it was all about 100% cotton terry cloth pads. And that was the only way to compete with all the other, you know, polyesters and 3M pads. That was Gerd Kink's thing, 100% cotton, and you just had to deal with the pads falling apart. You know, cause the Velcro drivers, which I'm still not convinced, uh, they designed the perfect Velcro driver that, that will run a pad like this. I mean, they work fine on these two ways and these these satanic microfibers, but these, you know, the polyzorbs or whatever, not the polyzorbs, what do you call these things? It's something absorb. Pause. One of the, that's a snap pad I was telling about earlier, oh. the one on the top center. Why they call it a snap pad? That's just a name I gave it. It's a terry cloth pad. Oh, so yeah, they pad. get destroyed by, you know, the uh, spear. You have to break in your driver. Uh, yes. You can't use it with a harpoon driver. You have to use it with either a Velcro driver, like on the Orbot, or a missile driver, but if that driver's not broken in, shred that pad up. That's correct. Yeah, and if you use a traditional brush style, you know, pad driver, you know, within, within a few jobs, you're poking right through the thing and doing texture damage and causing excessive drag, and it's, I don't know, what's your favorite combo? For you know absorbent type OP cleaning, where you really want to put as much dirt in there as possible, the combo not so much uh, a machine, but the type cotton of and microfiber. That would be my go-to combo. And then the snap pad now, only because I mean it's still kind of a new pad, I'm still kind of getting used to it, but I do like it. It picks up a lot of soil. I've sent out quite a few. As a matter of fact, Fred, who's there in the chat, I just sent him one to try out. A few other guys have them, and if you have the right driver, it's going to clean great. It's going to last a long time, but that aside, cotton, whether it be a glad pad or a super absorb and a microfiber, lots of but, and an also an apple fritter. An apple fritter. <laughs> but what's what's the uh, what's your preferred driver? <laughs> I'll take two. <laughs> yeah. Well, the preferred right driver. We're using the Orbot, which is why I used for a long, 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 long time. Uh, the Velcro driver is what comes stock, and I got used to that. And uh, I was fine with that. But then that aside, like on the Mighty Echo, obviously in a lot of the other machines, you have the red bristle driver, which is great. you got to break red in that driver, though. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, and you know that pad on the left. That's the one with those uh, scrub strips. But don't you almost find, like, you need two pad drivers for the same machine to, you know, to really be able to use a bunch of different types of pads? Or do you just bring two machines? <laughs> no, I think... Uh, you're limited with a Velcro driver on the Orb. You can't run like a loopy pad, things like that. They won't hold so it. Right? You're going to use one. It's going to be the red bristle. If you want to use all kinds of pads, um, if you're going to use something like a Velcro driver, you're best off with just a microfiber and cotton. Yeah, Robert makes a good point. Yeah, there, there is a, no, a lot of knowledge, a lot of product knowledge, all these pad, Velcro driver combos, you know, the, picking the right weight machine. Apparently now there's a big debate on how much magic happens over an extra, you know, thir 13 sixteenth of an inch in oscillation, and uh, you got to yeah, have a that's a controversial product. subject right now. Yeah, so when I hear that there's companies out there doing it with just the 175 and just one type of those big loopy polysorb bonnets, I don't know, man. I always got to wonder, you know, what they're leaving behind and, and what their excuses are to why they couldn't get it out. Uh, we had a, a guy, he actually showed up on Mike before last night. I haven't, haven't seen him in years, but he's uh, next town over down there. And the very first time I ever met him was down at the beach, saw his truck, came up. I didn't, 
I forget if I introduced myself or not, but I just said, so what do you do when you run into really filthy, greasy carpets, dog pee and all that? He says, I don't. I refer those to, to the steam cleaners, you know. Um, and Will, I don't know, has Will showed up? Will's got that kind of same motto, you know. He, he doesn't try yeah. to be a hero and, and try and pad carpets that are too far gone. He lets the uh, Sager show up and run the super spinners over those. Hey, Will is here. Cool. I'm going to get the Will here in a second. But Will Searing from uh, Las Vegas, Damon's neighbor, Taco Mate, is the most successful low-moisture multi-truck company that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's probably bigger, better out there, but uh, I don't know of them. And I, I want Will to spend a few minutes telling his story because, uh, well, you'll see. Will's a fascinating guy, and he's, uh, he's kicking butt in Vegas. Uh, let's get through your graphics here. I was looking for pictures of a pad driver and got distracted. Uh, here's a good one. There you go. Yeah. So this same type of pad, right? Before, and this is a... Uh, right. That's a Super Zorb, house. actually. Super Zorb. That's a pot pad. got a no center hole in its driver because you're getting soil absorption right down That's there. That's the Velcro driver. That's the Velcro. Okay. And uh, you can see it actually in the microfiber too, but it's harder to tell in this picture. But, um, obviously with the cotton, you can see the soil that's picked up. So, you know, obviously the question, where does the dirt go? I mean, these cotton pads, they pick up a tremendous amount of soil. All right, bye. We can get into the debate is going to pick up more wand or pad, but the bottom line is that these cotton pads do absorb soil. Dame, if you were going to set up a guy to go out and start a low moisture cleaning business and whatever, he's got 30 grand to, to outfit his truck. I would tell him to give me 25. And then we'll start. Give you 25 for guidance, but then what would you what would you put in that truck? What machines? What what pads? What chemicals? That's a good question. I. Uh, you know, obviously the staples, which is going to be your vacuum cleaner. Um, I would say either, as far as the core machine goes, either an OP machine wheels down or a dual speed rotary, uh, preferably with an onboard sprayer. Um, How do you CRV make that? Machine, I think is critical. Dual Sometimes speed. a Cymex, depending on what your other machines are. Uh, a spotting machine or a small portable is very, very important. So you can claw, uh, do a pull street, things of that nature, and um, an assorted stair tool or polisher, maybe a stepson. So you need you need tools. You need different tools. You can't just work alone, just an OP alone. Will or uh, Damon, adjust your mic, man. You're fading out again. I'm back. Here, how's that? Better. So you, you need an arsenal, just like with hot water extraction, no different. Uh, BLM. Yeah. So again, uh, your core machine is either going to be a wheels down OP, in my opinion, or a speed rotary. You should have a CRB um, and then your various steer tools, spotting uh, machine or small portable. I would agree with uh, Dane. I'm sure there's a Dane Gregory here, but a 10 inch. CRB for tight areas and stairs. If you were to run the 10 inch first after pre spraying and then uh, run in the bonnet after that, that'd do a pretty no. darn good job. Uh, are you talking about for stairs or are you talking about in general? Stairs. stairs. Oh, stairs. Now. Yeah. In general, I think the CRB is a great tool to run before you vacuum, um, right. especially with VLM. I mean, there's so much garbage in the carpet. If you run the CRB first, you're going to loosen up the fiber, you're going to pull up the pet hair, the grit. Everything a vacuum can't. So you run that first, then you run your vacuum, and you pull out everything the vacuum couldn't get up before. And then you apply your pre-spray, dwell, then start your padding process, and then you groom the carpet. So it's all those How many square feet can you average doing all those steps? Uh, that's a good question. Alone or with a helper, that makes a big difference. But you know what? Let me ask you this. How many square feet can you do that with hot water extraction? Because I'm not, not to debate it, but the steps really aren't that different, right? You should pre-vacuum, you hot water extract, you should groom, um, you should allow for dwell time. I mean, if you actually look at the steps side by side, there really aren't that many differences if you're doing everything. Yeah, I guess so. 
I think, yeah, this is a good segue in, into introducing Will. Um, Will said he started with six grand. But, uh, Will, you want to uh, turn on your microphone? And Fred, if you can make uh, Will a uh, presenter, that'd be great. Actually, let me uh, let me opt out of here. And... Monica, at 1,000 square feet. Yeah, that's actually possible. Okay. That's my hand. And if you're with a helper, you can really go fast. Will, you remember to go up top, turn on your microphone there and to the right of the microphone icon. Will's been our guest, uh, I don't know, two or three times at least. Hopefully he hasn't forgotten the uh, steps. Uh, Mike's on. Can you hear me? There you go. How are you doing, Will? I'm good. How you guys doing? Yep. All righty. So I'm going to, uh, I'll just let you explain how you started. Um, you don't need to talk so much about your, your favorite subject, Facebook and social media tonight, but uh, how you started, where you're at today, and uh, describe. I'm sure the gang here would love to hear, you know, every little micro detail of how you clean carpet with your, your kind of unique system there. Uh, yeah, definitely. We, uh, actually, I think, I was trying to see if I had some pictures saved of how we started out. Uh, we started out, I was working in the casinos, and a friend of mine was doing uh, carpet cleaning for a guy here in Vegas that was doing some of the similar process uh, cleaning with host. Uh, we clean with host and we use NCAP 2 uh, Bridgepoint product, and then a couple of other things that are involved in our cleaning. Uh, we use only host machines to clean with, and then uh, we don't really use the 175s. Uh, sometimes on commercial carpet, we'll pad those and then use um, host machines afterwards. But basically, how we started is I had about 4,000 saved up, so we just picked up a little pickup truck. I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Because uh, we didn't really have a lot of money, and when I was working for the casino, I was just sick and tired of, you know, working midnight and holidays and everything else. And uh, my partner was getting paid 10 bucks an hour, you know, working 50, 60 hours for this guy that was making amazing money off of this process. So uh, the guy wanted to sell the business to us, and he wanted us to pay him 3000 a month, and we just decided, you know, that wasn't a good idea because this guy wasn't paying taxes on his business. Uh, a couple other, you know, shady items were going on with it. So what we did is we got our first truck. Let me see. Open it here. Look at all the uh, what we did. shots on your desktop. That's impressive. <laughs> what we did is basically we just started with a. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, we just started with a little Ford pickup truck uh, that we found on Craigslist. I mean, it was a quick three thousand. Neither of us had like amazing credit, so it's not as easy to uh, you know buy into a franchise and pay thirty or forty thousand dollars to start something. So. We found this, this was our first truck. I wish we still had this. It was an awesome truck because it's so low to the ground. You can just reach over, pick up chemicals. And we started with these cheap old T, so this was about four and a half years ago. We started with these uh, T6 host machines. Uh, these machines are awesome. I still have about seven of these actually in our warehouse. Uh, they come, you know, with the white bristles. They come with zebra bristles, uh, wool carpet cleaning bristles. And uh, these, you know, are powerful. They dig in deep enough. They're not as heavy as the Reliant machines, uh, but these only ran us about 400 bucks a piece uh, on eBay. So we bought these off of eBay, 800 there. We bought a Sandia extractor. We use those Sandias for, you know, uh, upholstery cleaning or pulling out urine with a water cloth, and then obviously our little cheap sanitaire commercial vacuum. So we started with these items here. We got. Will, can you still buy that model of host? <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. I actually just put a couple of for sale online on eBay the other day. Uh, they're going like five or six hundred. I still buy them when they're when I can find them for like two or three hundred on eBay because uh, I've got all the spare parts. The only issue is is a lot of these right here will turn bright yellow, which is kind of an ugly color to bring into a customer's house. I just stopped using these because they look so cheap. Uh, going into, you know, high-end homes and commercial properties and stuff like that. I mean, when we first started, you know, we had nothing else if we failed or didn't, you know, we just went on with what we had to use. And, you know, they clean great as long as you've got the proper bristles for each type of carpet. Um, but, yeah, you can still buy these. I think they're about 400 500 on eBay. How much Will, not to interrupt you, but that's the, uh, that's the world famous Clean Mart Sanitaire vacuum on the left. I actually have uh, Clean Mart, yeah. 
and the crazy thing is, is like with our local suppliers here, they sell these vacuums for like 600 bucks or something crazy. We go on eBay and buy these for like $120. So everything I buy is pretty much on eBay. And this was a brand new vacuum back then. Uh, now we use the 17 inch. So it's a lot wider for when we vacuum. I think I might have one in this next picture here. Let's see. Will, can you still buy that host machine new is what I meant? Uh, you can't buy it new because they only have the host, uh, the new T5s that they have now. Let me see. So this was about a year after we started because I started, you know, obviously you know my Facebook advertising. We started advertising pretty heavy on Facebook. So we started to build and that's when I quit my job at the casino and we had two of us on a truck instead of just my partner working alone. Because, you know, he was doing jobs that was five areas with a sectional and shit, even sometimes tile. So, you know, he was at a job for four or five hours by himself. And then it just started getting crazy to where we, you know, were doing 15, 20 houses a week. So we needed, you know, additional people. So I quit, uh, started working with him. We got these Reliance right here, which, again, bought off of eBay. Actually, the cool thing is that I found a guy through Craigslist. And he's in Philadelphia, and he actually restores these older Reliant machines. And so I was buying them for about 900 bucks off of him. Um, and he was just shipping them to me through freight. We picked them out at uh, Waxy. They, you know, delivered them right to their freight. They did it for free for us because we buy our host product there. And uh, so these 900, so these machines are so much better. They're much heavier on the top right here. You've got the motor here and whatever junk else is in there. Gear case covers, uh, you know, these crack quite often uh, just because now that we've got different guys using them, Sometimes, you know, you don't take care of your stuff like it's your own if you don't own it, I guess. Uh, but these are actually really heavy machines. So that's why we prefer these Reliance compared to the Brush Pros. Not only that, but price-wise, I mean, I've got 12 of these machines almost for 900 a piece compared to spending $2,000, $3,000 on a new Brush Pro, and these work perfectly fine. Uh, you can still order the bristles brand new from Host. You can order gear case covers brand new. Uh, these motor covers, if they crack, you can purchase them for 200 bucks, brand new from Host. So just to keep the machines looking fresh. Um, and again, we were only a year into business, so we didn't have that much money. Um, and these sanitary commercial vacuums, we've got a ton of these now. Like this one right here in this picture, I probably still have in the warehouse. They last a good four or five years. They're powerful enough to pick up that Host product. So once that Host goes down, gets agitated in, um, these... As long as you're keeping them clean and it's not clogged up, you can pick up hosts without a problem. We had a lady the other day um, that took a vacuum over it. You know, I always hear the story of, oh, there's always residue left over and other crap like that. Well, she took a sharp vacuum or something, you know, nothing that has like crazy uh, longer bristles like these commercial vacuums do, but she picked up no residue after the vacuuming uh, two days, three days later. So, you know, I've never had a problem with ever having to go back either to re-vacuum a place as long as your vacuum is clean. So um, back here, that's the Liberator machines. We don't use those anymore. I actually sold this. You can buy these used on eBay too for about fourteen, fifteen hundred. We started using the Liberators just for commercial properties, never for residential because they're so freaking heavy. Um, but you know, even in commercial properties, you don't need to use this because the no, where that has the vacuum on top, correct? Uh, it does. It has the vacuum right here at the bottom, uh, and then the filters at the top. This, it just doesn't vacuum that well. Even these host reliant machines, we have freestyles that actually have vacuums attached. I may have a picture of one. Um, but yeah, even the vacuums on those we take off because we always just vacuum afterwards. The vacuums on those things don't ever pick up well enough. So no are point really. Still, using those. On your are you still using the uh, host sponges exclusively with your ink cap? Uh, we do. So we just use host, uh, these 30 pound drums. These 30 pound drums are about 80 bucks a piece. From we purchased them from one of the distributors here in town. We'll, we can go through a bucket of that host, uh, give or take two or three days, depending on how many jobs. So usually we're performing five jobs a day, four to five jobs a day per truck, and that host will last us about two days, I'd say. So just depends on how heavy soiled the areas are, because you're not having to, you know, put this compound just like with the Brush Pro compound. You shouldn't have to put it on every inch of this carpet. You should only have to put it on the high traffic lanes. Uh, to make sure that, you know, those come out clean and look like the rest of the carpet. The rest of the carpet's being sprayed with the O2, um, the NCAP O2, and, you know, different stain removers or whatever else we need to use. We use a product called, uh, similar to PC45. Uh, we, don't, we no longer use that CTI product because it's not strong enough. 
but we use that to mist high traffic lanes. And uh, that's how we can get them a lot brighter, mixed with the O2, along with the host altogether. Hey, well, so, uh, I got a question. Yeah, go that sanitary vacuum, are you using the shakeout bag or the paper bag? Uh, the shakeout bag. So yeah. the shakeout bags is, you know, you can throw them in the wash after a week, just clean them. They're easy to remove and, yeah. Those so sanitaires rarely clog either. They're great. They hold up extremely. Yeah, unless the carpet's filthy and you have to really wet it, uh, that's the only time I've ever seen it clog is if there's you have to put a lot of hosts in certain areas and vacuum it. Let's say we're doing like a three-bedroom place and the guys get done with it in an hour. If they start in that first room 20 or 30 minutes prior, you know, and they're vacuuming 20 minutes later, usually we try to give, you know, we don't vacuum to the very end of the cleaning, obviously. So when you vacuum at the end of the cleaning, the first room you start in is usually the driest room, so the host won't clog into it. Usually the carpet is uh, just barely damp in that room. So you start in that room, vacuum, start in your second room out, you know, pretty much out the door because you don't want to clog the vacuum. And you want the host to sit in there long enough because with Brush Pro, powder, you know, host, there's that... Uh, you know, hydrogen peroxide booster, I would say, or an encapsulation probably chemical in it that just helps bring out the color of the carpet. I'm surprised those bags are lasting you that long. I would have thought the solvency and the, the compound, and then, especially if you're laundering them, I, I would have figured the rubber lining would deteriorate and all your dust would be going right through that red red fabric. I have yeah, a question. Uh, what happens yeah. if you commingle the in cap and the uh, compound? I'm sorry, what was the question? If you uh, mix the in cap and the compound in the same area, in other words, you typically apply your in cap and then your compound in those areas. You said you only use the compound like the high traffic areas. You also so we had like, or just the you compound? know, it, what I focus on is, let's say there was this stain in this entryway. When we end cap this, so this house, for example, we could end cap and host at the same time. So that's the difference between jobs. We always have two technicians per truck. Um, sometimes if it's just an apartment with one or two rooms, it'll just be one technician. But what we do is if the carpet isn't filthy, like let's say, you know, see you can see this traffic lane isn't bad here. It just has the staining right here. We'll actually uh, end cap this and then host it at the same exact time. And okay. then uh, we'll, you know, use a stain remover probably on this while we're cleaning it. Uh, but if we're using like a PC45 or stain remover that has to go heavy in a traffic lane, you have to end cap, you have to agitate, you have to apply the stain remover or the traffic brightener, and then put down the host. If you put down the host at the same time and apply a high traffic lane booster or something like that, it makes the carpet sticky at the end. So it's crunchy or sticky, and we would learned that the hard way. You know, one of our guys sprayed down so much of this stuff and tried to use host at the same time to agitate it, but it left the carpet so sticky and crunchy at the end. So you really have to, it really has to depend on the type of job. Uh, for three areas of carpet, you know, something that's not too bad, something like this that doesn't have high traffic lanes, this could take us an hour and 15 minutes to do three rooms like this. If it has heavy traffic lanes, I mean, we're looking at an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes, just because you have to agitate first, and then you have to put down the host, um, you know, and sometimes you have to agitate, put down traffic lane booster, or, you know, some sort of brightener and then host it, go back over it, reapply the end cap O2 again. So it really just depends on the situation. You have to know, you know, it's always 20 ounces of end cap O2 uh, for every two ounces gallons. Per gal oh, 10 ounces a gallon. Okay. Yeah, so 10 ounces per gallon. So for every two gallons goes in, you know, just one of those little pump sprayers, two-gallon pump cap sprayers you can buy from Interlink or whatever. Cap O2 must be a uh, peroxide based end cap then, I'm guessing. Uh, yes, correct. O2 is a peroxide base. We don't use uh, NCAP DS anymore just because DS is only for darker type carpet. Even on darker carpet, with DS you have to add Boostall, um, and it leaves a little bit more of a residue, so there's no point in even using uh, DS anymore. So there's no issue with the, the, the host, the sponges, and the NCAP commingling. That's not a problem. No, it's actually like the best factor. If you don't use host, if you just use O2, uh, you don't get the same result as if you're using host to agitate after or during the process. You're not getting the absorbency from the sponges, I guess. Yeah, I can definitely tell the difference if, let's say, we ran out of host on a truck and someone chose to try to clean a place with just O2. 
uh, you can tell the difference between carpet that has been hosted and not hosted, uh, especially in the high traffic lanes. It's, that makes all the difference, you know what I mean? Um, and you should only have to apply that host or your dry compound to high traffic lanes. You shouldn't have to apply it to, you know, somewhere where no one's walking because it's not going to make a difference on the brightness of the carpet or the cleanliness. I mean, of course, you're vacuuming and spraying that area, but, you know, you're not really doing much else to it. And a rotary's never really fit your business model in residential? Uh, no, we've never used the rotary at all just because uh, rotary as in you're talking about a truck mount? No, like a 175 machine. Oh, like 175, got it. Uh, just in residential, it's too large. I mean, we could bought the 15, we've got the 17, we just use those for um, tile cleaning, but we don't use it for anything else pretty much. Um, before, we were just actually using host machines, but we uh, invested into 175s, and it just works a lot easier using 175s I mean, for tile. I mean, it really makes sense, I mean, because you can work really, really quickly. Just thinking of, like, the time management, just grabbing that, that host machine, you can run it upstairs really quick. It's just easy to get around with it, so I see that. Host machines are easy, plus you can get in edges a lot easier. Uh, the corners, stairs are really easy. You know, it's pretty simple using it on all of those. Uh, if there's urine in the house, we do urine extraction. We take black lights. We extract each individual urine spot. Uh, that's usually with two guys on the truck. One will extract. The other one will start deep cleaning behind them uh, with the host machines you know, vacuum, put down enzymes, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you know, and we do really good at urine extraction. I mean, it's like one of our specialties. We charge 85 bucks for up to two rooms with it. I mean, the guys do amazing at it. We never get callbacks for Are you using a, a hand claw or a stand-up claw with that spot? Uh, we're using a hand claw. We've got all of them. Uh, so we're using a lot with a lot of small urine spots. We use just a, the hand tool wand that you would use on upholstery. Uh, the hand tool you know, it was perfect for those areas. You just spray it down, extract it, put a fiber rinse or neutralizer into it. And then uh, the water claw is more for like heavy saturated areas. Hey, well, one of the, one of the uh, attendees tonight wants to know if your mother disapproves of you not having an edging tool on your back and <laughs> uh, We've never had a problem with edges. If there's ever really an issue, we could take uh, the Standia over an edge or something like that. But, I mean, the host machine itself, because it doesn't have that big metal piece that your uh, Brush Pro machines have or some other machines, it's pretty flat. The bristles almost go all the way to the edge on those areas. Um, so we don't really have an issue. We, you know, we'll still spray the corners, edges, and then uh, we can always just sweep any particles out and vacuum at the end. Um, but yeah, I don't really have an issue with that. you get much uh, carbon staining build up there in Vegas, or people don't run their furnaces down there? No. Uh, no. I, I Sometimes I'll see the black build up just a little. I mean, we can get that out. You just use, you know, uh, like a PC45, or just use a straight up, um, what's it called? We use a product um, that Cleanmart sells, one of our vendors here, and it just takes it out. But you, we never barely see that, especially see with urine. Doors. I mean, Doors, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Will, tell us a little bit more about your business. You're running uh, three to four trucks, depending on employees. Uh, we've got two full-time trucks. So, And then we've got a third additional truck that usually will do rug pickups. Just about uh, three months ago, we moved into a warehouse. So with that warehouse, we have, you know, it's so much easier now instead of having the guys come to our house. Uh, it's like a thousand bucks a month. We went just to start small, just to see, you know, because everything we've done, we've paid cash for. Uh, so we don't have any business debt. You know, we took out a small loan to build up the warehouse, but we don't have anything that's too dramatic. And that's always been our thing because, you know, with this industry, I was never sure how it was going to go. And, you know, now we're doing over 400000 in revenue almost a year. So and that's about 40 to 50 houses a week. And I'm pretty sure, I'm sure if we got if we moved into steam cleaning, you know, something along those lines, we could get through these houses a lot faster than we do. Uh, but right now, it's, you know, we're, we're popular for what we do out here. So created a brand um, with it, too. Yeah, we ran pretty heavy with our, I mean, we've done a lot of advertising through Facebook before anyone else did. And so, like, you know, as I've always talked about Facebook, we loved it for the first three, four years. Now everyone's using Facebook, so we're doing a couple different things to change that up a little bit. Uh, we're also getting higher end jobs. Um, so today it was funny. One of these guys at one of our vendors said something to me. and I was thinking about it and he goes, yeah, you guys are perfect 
for the little old ladies because you guys were 30 years old. We look younger. He's like, because you remind them of their grandsons and, you know, they want you to clean their carpet. That's why they use you. And I was thinking, you know, we've got clients from all different ages, right? You know, we do commercial properties. It's, it's, I think they were more dissing on the type of cleaning that we do than the type, you know, than how we perform our results and stuff like that. So it was nothing about, oh, yeah, we look young, so that's why these older ladies use us. It's not. We service almost 50 houses a week right now, and we just get great results. I mean, we wouldn't have built up 200 reviews on Facebook with five stars from, you know, doing shitty-ass work. Uh, you know, and our customer is uh, people that aren't happy with steam cleaning or people that had soaking wet carpets or they get scammed by this company here in Vegas called Desert Carpet Cleaning or, you know, any – there's – so many different factors that go into it. People move from different areas and they've used the host process before. Um, you know, and we've had customers, same customers for five years now. So we're just building up off of that, basically, and uh, we're trying think, to... Add. Yeah, I think okay. Will, you made a good point. Oh, sorry, I was going to say you made a good point about people wanting to uh, try something different. I think a lot of guys that aren't VLM only or VLM centric, like a lot of us here in the chat, People proactively seek an alternative sometimes uh, for the reasons you mentioned. Either the carpet's too, too long to dry or they felt they paid too much um, or they want to try to do something where there's just less water use in general because they're green conscious. That plays a big role. Oh, it's a huge it's really role. And that's a success for uh, chem dries, you know, initial, geez, I don't know, 20 years and that people were tired of getting their carpets soaked, you know, soaked with soap from all the uh, Bozo carpet, you know, hot water guys, that they look for an alternative. Because you can you know, go, well, back in the day, you'd go through the phone book and call 10 carpet cleaners and get the same overwetted, lackluster job, you know, especially if it came out of a franchise or a corporation ran business. So Chem Dry came in promising something different, speedy, speedy drying and, you know, just a whole different alternative. But... The fact is, chem dries a little moisture process is as is, is bad as the the hot water guys. They're using those big loopy bonnets and you know, with virtually no agitation, trying to rely solely on their magic chemical. And now look at them. Now they're doing hot water extraction because they weren't getting the repeat rate. But uh, obviously, guys like Will and, and Damon and, and a lot of your members know how to do it right. But it's uh, it's a process that takes a lot of thinking power, which your average carpet cleaning technician that well, right, that's exactly right. The thing with VLM also is you have to follow all the steps. I mean, you have to pre back I'm sure no, Will will sure. agree with this. You have to go by a certain process. You really can't cut corners ever. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to have an inferior product. And this is true, especially yeah. with VLM. Yeah, yeah, you, is that Will? One thing with... with uh, with ChemDry, see, I didn't even know that ChemDry existed when we started this. So, I mean, Natural Dry was just kind of a name we were just sitting around and came up with one day. So when I actually looked into ChemDry, uh, a lot of c customers have told me that they didn't like ChemDry because their carpets were so wet after they get cleaned it. So I don't know if ChemDry is a low moisture cleaner, unless they offer that as they like were. a service. They have switched. They used to be now, but there's still a few. They didn't force them to, to get truck mounts. Uh, there were two or three franchises in the Santa Cruz area, and as far as I know, one of them still hasn't switched. Uh, but yeah, the, even their their low PSI truck mounts, you can still overwet, especially when you use an RX20, which doesn't have the greatest vacuum. Bill Jowers in the chat, he's actually a chem dry guy in Texas, great guy, and uh, he's a uh, low moisture only. It hasn't gone with the change. Yeah. What I was saying earlier, Will, was that, in my experience at least with VLM, is you have to always follow that process to get it right. You can't really cut corners. I mean, you have to do your steps, absolutely, otherwise you're going to have problems. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And that's why we, when we hire guys, we don't hire anyone that's ever worked for another carpet cleaner before because we want them to follow our process exactly. I mean, there's a lot to it. You have to, you know, you're going into a room with a host machine and you're taking it side to side first all the way through the room and then front to back and then back over those traffic lanes and then applying host and you know there's so many different other things that go into it where we just don't want them to spray down a product think they can just run over it and they're done um, not only that I mean it's a great process I mean obviously for us we get really great results with it but 
you know, it's all about, too, building up the business with the good customer service and talking to the customer and stuff like that, too, because we explain the process to them. So, I mean, just like I'm not sure, sure hot water extraction guys do, you know, you got to use hot water extraction because it pulls out all that dirt. It's, you know, 300 degree water, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're explaining, you know, we're using, you know, a dry product. It's a green seal certified product. The host is biodegradable. You could practically eat it. You know, so it's all about explaining about how you're cleaning your process you know, what you do. We do that as soon as we get on the phone with someone. They ask us about how we clean or what we do different or, you know, we can sit on a phone with someone for 15, 20 minutes explaining to them. Um, you know, and some people will get out to their house, we'll pull up those low moisture machines out. It's only happened probably three or four times, I'd say, in four or five years that we've gone into a house and they said, no, this isn't what I wanted or, it, you know, they question, is this going to get the carpet clean? And, you know, with people like that, I say, hey, if it doesn't, we'll refund you. You know, we've got a customer satisfaction. We go through the house, clean it. You know, obviously, we'll put a little bit more effort into it if their carpet's dirty and they're already complaining. Um, but, you know, just with low moisture, the problem is is that I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that we're taking a lot longer per job, but we're charging the same amount as a hot water extraction person would. So I need to find a way that we can actually increase how much we're charging um, because we're spending a longer time on it. So I think really that's my only issue. It's nothing with the cleaning at all. You, you know, especially if you're starting out in this business, it's one of the best ways to get into it because you're not, if you don't have thirty, forty thousand dollars to put into a truck mount, which I was telling Mike last night on the phone, if I had forty grand right now, I'd buy a truck mount just to, for tile cleaning, you know, for air duct cleaning, for garage cleaning, whatever, um, you know, just for the future. But right now, we're pretty much going to be sticking with the low moisture just the way that's worked for us. And, you know, we've built our business model pretty much off of it. Uh, it's also the products you're using, too. So I've tried, you know, different products from different vendors that have sent us products, and nothing's worked as well for us as the NCAP 2 you know, mixed with a traffic lane booster and host and all that good stuff. Uh, we'll have a... We'll have another question, Simon. Yeah, maybe you need to try question. your local business. Uh, there. Yeah, Bill's, Bill's typing the way down here. He says, I have a truck mount. I'd like to have a steam cleaning van after I'm finished with the chem dry stint. Oh, meaning you're not going to stick with it, Bill? Uh, but there's an added value to my commercial cleaning business. You can think chem dry's core clean solution. You can drink the solution. It's all natural, safe, non-toxic. A lot of my customers are like that. Uh, I had a uh, chem dry well, try to recruit well. me a year ago to switch yeah, over to a yeah. franchise, and it was interesting. A couple of conversations where I would have had to replumb all of my truck mounts to galvanized for to run the formula through the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Too many customers are confused wow. when they see the equipment. It's just like with truck mounts. When you guys show, I mean, when hot water extraction guys are showing online, you know, their big truck mounts and doing videos of their hoses running up four flights of stairs, it just, I've gone into a customer's house that's like, I don't understand that. You know, I've seen truck mounts out there that are spitting water out the side of them. It's, it's a mess, this and that. So, you know, it's, VLM has its benefits to that. I mean, you were not running hoses, having to run hoses through a house or up four flights of stairs. Um, our commercial properties all prefer the low moisture. They when they call us, they ask specifically, do you guys steam clean it? Do you come in with hoses or do you do the dry cleaning process? And, you know, 95% that book with us only want the dry cleaning because they want the quick dry time with it. Um, they don't want to have, you know, any issues with, like, their employees, for example. We do a call center. They don't want their don't employees want uh, walking around the hoses or anything else like that. Correct. Yeah. I think uh, clean works here. Uh, makes up a good point. Most of the time, customers have no idea what you're using. And I, I think if you advertise and, and solely rely on your method, I shouldn't say solely, but mostly rely on your method to stand out versus your uh, minty fresh breath or your dapper beard or your whatever, your shiny trucks, then yeah, you're going to attract more method conscious customers that have been screwed by or, or their idea they were screwed by the last method when it was really they were just you know early technician. on when uh, i started i wasn't particularly clear in how i cleaned on the website and all that um but i found that you can actually you'll find people are proactively seeking an alternative and you can get a lot of business that way and 
But it's an alternative that they're not really sure an alternative to what. It's an alternative to a, a lackluster experience by a Larry Lunchpail type employee that just didn't take the time to do it right no matter what he had in his truck. And that can happen again with low moisture. Just like steam cleaner, there's plenty of uh, bozos out there with just, you know, one machine, one pad, one chemical, uh, you know, putting a, a black mark on the industry. You know? That's absolutely the case. But, you know, it, yeah. you should definitely talk about your method, your process. I think there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not bashing other methods in the process. If you're doing something different, that ninety five percent of the other guys out there should really talk it up. I think that's important. Yeah. But as as uh, what's his name? Your friend there, Kim Dry, the conversation's moving so fast. It sounds like he's moving around methods a lot and it it might very well be something that you move on from. I mean, who knows? Will could be running all truck mounts in, in five Absolutely. years. Absolutely. And there's guys that go from hot Why, water to low moisture. Just like owner operators, and you know, when I initially started out, it was all about me and the vortex, you know. Uh, and I had a couple of people get pissed off when we took a stint and didn't use a big truck, and you know, it took a while for them to get used to me not coming anymore and letting my crew do it. And it can be the same thing with with a method. If you got them so sold on that method, is why the carpet's coming out good. When in reality, you could be using a variety of methods and machines to wow. do. Wow. Ultimately, they're sold on you. That's they're right. you, yeah. I mean, I, Damon, I could go to a lot of jobs right now, the, the bulk of my jobs in Santa Cruz, my customers, and show up with a different machine, any any low moisture machine. And they go, oh, that's something new, Mike. What you got there? And I can say, oh, this is the latest, greatest. Oh, okay, make sure to close the door on your way out. And that's it. They don't yeah, even they care. Don't care. I totally agree. I care. I know I'm that's do after it. they know you. I mean, they still got, I mean, absolutely. I mean, ultimately, they're hiring you. They're not hiring the method. That's always yeah. Don't oversell the method, I guess is my point. It's not all that important as long as you're doing a good job and not padding PP jobs. Right? Anyway, Will, thanks uh, thanks a bunch for stopping by. I'm not sure if anybody's got any questions for Will, but uh, that was kind of a spontaneous thing. He just luckily had some time to, to come in here tonight. Call me sometime, Will. Yeah, Talk you guys it. should go do tacos. Oh, dear. <laughs> Probably convert him Tacos <laughs> Gordo or... Tacos Mexico. Taco, taco. Oh, tacos Mexico. Come on. Or at least so good. Eat taco, man. Tacos Gordo. There's so many other places. Plain Pastor. Tacos Mexico. Which one do you go to on Sahara? At Clean Mart. Sahara. Best one. <laughs> you guys probably eat next to each other all the time. You don't even realize it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Probably drive past each other too. Here in Vegas, you drive past probably 20, 30 carpet cleaning vans a day. We'll, uh, we'll get together one day, Will. All right. Nice seeing you guys. Thank you. Hey, Will. Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. It's a big show. Don't be a stranger. Come by this time. Yeah. Yeah. See you next week, Will. <laughs> I'll see you. So speaking of ChemDry, our, uh, we got a good local ChemDry here in Nevada. And when we were getting our, our truck, uh, I hate to say wrapped because it's just lettered. We were getting the truck lettered. He stopped by the shop at the same time. And he saw my van in there. He says, oh, great. New competition. I love it. And guess who got bumped out of first place in the, as the best carpet cleaner in Carson Valley? <laughs> Mr. Chemdry. So, yeah, that was the guy you voted out or got ousted from uh, the top yeah. spot. Yeah, he's probably going to be a little pissed. I'll have to dodge his vans for a while. I doubt he's going to be buying me any tacos. <laughs> but that's a big deal here. In Santa Cruz, you win best of, and you, know, you get one mention in one, one weekly paper, and it's all over with. Out here, you're in a, in a magazine that stays on the racks throughout the town, you know, for a whole year. And they give you a big door mag foot and a half size door magnets. I mean they, they really play it up and they, they hardly charge you anything. So it's a pretty cool small town thing. Uh Sager, are you still awake over there? You gonna go buy I'm a with you, man. <laughs> I ordered two while we were waiting here. <laughs> hey Damon your group of people there, how often does it come up where, boy, I sure wish I could get into tile and grout because uh, carpet seems to be shrinking in my area? Uh, with VLM, I mean, you can certainly do tile and grout. There's no reason not to. With CRB with tile brushes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that actually... they, don't, they don't clean half the jobs, but there's there's too many situations where there's a mess. Oh! Hey, hey, hey. Oh, sorry. She, uh... <laughs> 
VLM. VLM being brought up and hot dog doesn't like it. Hot water and VLM. Here we go. Yeah. There's a magic that happens underneath a turbo hybrid or an SX-15 that can't be duplicated with any, any amount of scrubbing or, or chemical. Because you got a vacuum and heat that sucks dirt out deeper than any, you know, anything else. So, and I, I would say, Sager, would you say that's 50% of the time that's the case? At least on new customers, people that never had it clean. Once you yeah. clean them and you're always cleaning their tile, you know, the maintenance, then you can come in with a tile wand or just scrub it and mop it off and you're fine. But when you're doing yeah, that. There's some that are fairly easy cleaning tile and grout jobs, yeah. And then there's yeah. the ones that you're never going to get them clean on that first run, it seems like, and you could be there forever and going at it. And you chisel and hammer and jackhammer would be best. So well, uh, you know, one of the problems with VLM and tile and grout, number one, we already talked about the CRV. I mean, I, I think that's a huge help. Uh, number two, a lot of the brushes they make for the various OP machines and 175 machines especially really don't get into the grout lines. Uh, there's an exception. That's the uh, Orbot tile and grout brush. That's the best one out there. Why is that? Is it staggered? Because it's cut. Was why? Is it staggered? Yeah, exactly. It's cut, so with the weights on top, because you have that weight kit, and it flattens out. I'll send you, I should have sent you pictures. I might have sent you pictures yeah. from our first. See if you can find a picture of that. I'm, I'm curious, because uh, the, the, best, the best grout brush in the world is the 595 neon yellow one you get at Home Depot. Uh -huh. When they're brand new, the angle and the stiffness of that brush is perfect. Um, the hinge is a piece of junk. you got to put a, a screw through it. But uh, there's just nothing substitutes a you know, brush on a stick. You know, no spinning tool will get down in there with the proper weight. But I'd like to see what you're talking about. Um, while we're talking about machines, yeah, Damon sent me some slides for the latest, greatest uh, units out there. And this, these are all you know, 2016 models. So for some reason, Orbot decided to get into a whole different different look if nothing else obviously it's got a tank on it i don't see a spray system i'm not quite sure what is this that's the difference it in. doesn't have the sprayer you can see this picture right on, i gotta bring this getting you well, that's just a kickstand isn't it <laughs> why <laughs> yeah i don't know is that wait it's the balance point it's got to oh, be the balance point on this black piece yeah. No, that's to keep the head up so you can change yeah. pads. So and the same on the regular feed, robot, same the water's right? coming through these holes, Great. right? And this has some kind of a Velcro right. spiked. Okay. Yeah. I think it's like a, a hybrid driver, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's Velcro and then also uh, a harpoon yeah. type what's driver. This, so what's this knob here? Through. Is that a drain? I think. Probably a drain. That yeah, looks nice. All their machines look nice. It's one of the better looking. This, this is a very good looking machine. There's, yeah, this is a little better. Basically, it's a CRB with a spray system. It's got some paint features. Yeah, it's got a spray system and a you know, nice low hanging sprayer. It's not going to get knocked off. Good, good ventilation. It's uh, got a radar detector and a, a single bicycle grip style handle, backward facing flow regulator, built in kickstand. Uh, the one I saw in Nashville that Ivan brought out, it has this little tray that it eh, doesn't help. You guys are seeing these pictures, right? Yeah. Um, the tray's not going to hold a whole lot before it overflows, which was the biggest flaw I saw in the machine. Whereas the, the Austrian units, you know, you can hold, you can get a whole sheep in those things before they overflow. But this was, I don't know, to me it seemed a little weird. I mean, granted, it is between the brushes more convenient you're gonna be able to get closer to the walls head in but yeah, i don't know seems like seems a bit limited um so you got the mo what else did you send the mini max oh this crazy thing we were talking about this before the show started sager you seen one of these no i have not i i'm <laughs> yeah <laughs> What would you guess this weighs? I was shocked by its weight. That should be, well, that should, hold on. Maybe Look we should at it over. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're going to have a contest. We're going to give away. Okay. Uh, yeah. Somebody's already Googled it up. Dan's on here tonight. He already has the answer. So, <laughs> uh, shoot, that would have been good. Man, we could have had a timed contest. Damon, pick us something else along those lines. We're going to give. I will. Away. I already That's came crazy. out with one for Mark. There's a lot on there. In like three uh, seconds or five okay. seconds, he's going to win. No time to Google. Anyways, you got these stair climbing wheels, and apparently these little gray things on here, they might be wheels in themselves that allow these wheels to move side to side as well as clunkety clunk up and down staircases. It's like uh, Walt Disney. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not sure why the height of this engine or the motor is like that, but believe it or not, uh, I'm assuming not, not uh, counting for this two-gallon jug, it, it only weighs... What did we say? 89 pounds? 89 pounds. My regular rotary, just a standard 175 advance, weighs 90 pounds. I don't know. This base plate must be aluminum and all bored out. Most base plates are designed to be heavy, you know, to make the machine more effective. And this guy's taking another route and using a lightweight metal. And then you see it's got a wheel here to keep from uh, marring up walls. Got pressure regulator. It's got an onboard spray system, so you can hook up a coiled hose to go spray stairs or whatever it is you want to put out. Spray head system here. No shower feed. And what'd you call this driver, Damon? A napper, something like that. Dirt napper. That's dirt a dirt napper. napper. You can use either a regular bristle driver or, in this case, what he has on there at the moment. Yeah. A dirt napper, uh, which is basically bristle on the outside and then absorb a pad in the middle or even a fiber pad. Right, so you got agitation on the outside, absorbency on the inside. Right. Uh, John Burdick. Yeah, a big... that's a malish. As we pointed out. A malish. But 89 pounds, I don't see how it's going to hide the dirt better than 189 pound Cymex. I kind of just refuse to believe that, but it does look, uh, it does look convenient. Uh, here's the, the hot mama of the day, the new mighty Eco... I'm not sure what's eco about it, but it's a uh, this is a jiggler that has shower and spray feed. Correct. You can, uh, there's a, a ball valve in here somewhere where you can direct one or the other. So the same trigger does it. You can't do it at the same time, right, Damon? Correct. One or the other. There's a not, there's a switch actually right at the base of the tank. There's a switch. There's a switch. To either shower or spray. And the one I saw, for some reason, had a, a way to disconnect one of these jets. I don't know why you'd only want to spray one when they're off-center. Didn't make any sense. I don't know. Does yours have that? I don't think so. Okay, maybe that was an experiment. Um, so these wheels are something nobody's ever seen on a floor cleaning or floor scrubber before. Have you figured out through use, not so much through theory, but through use, why they went with these big wheels? Uh, mobility, easier to move around. Um, you know, could you do the same thing with the Orbot size wheel or what you see on some of the other machines? Possibly. But I do think you have a little more control with bigger wheels, especially if you go on carpet or floors that aren't quite level. Um, so there's some advantages to it. But it doesn't make it awkward to use the big fat. No. No. Okay. But this machine's kind of rattling the uh, the, the low moisture manufacturing community in that it's absolutely significantly cheaper for the for the good for the it's 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 pretty yeah. great yeah and in typical mighty fashion they like to play robin hood and come in with a you know a decent tool that's cheap and i think this uh i think this tool is more than decent i think it's a uh, i got to use it on stone not carpet but it's all very well built and the only flaw i saw in the whole thing was that if you tip it back with a full tank uh, to change the pad, water comes out of this little, uh, on the other side there's a hose feature where you can take the hose out and uh, hook it up to a faucet to fill the tank. And it's not sealed enough to keep water from coming out. Um, I personally, I don't think I would use that feature and I'd probably just plug that hole up. When you got a, a giant wide mouth opening like this, easy enough to just throw a bucket in there, but I don't know. That's, that's nitpicking, you know. So that's a cool machine, and those are, what, 2300 or something, Mr. Yep, Damon? that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And I guess they're coming out with a wide travel. Or what, what do you call the larger travel? There's some acronym for that that makes Clean, it sound. Cleaning path. The what? Cleaning path. Yeah. 
a wider path than what's standard. Three eighths versus something else. Oh know. yeah, you're talking about the orbit. Yeah, the orbit. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's at, but yes, that is what's okay. been discussed in the Facebook. And this is its baby brother, same machine without all the whistles. Without the spray system. Exactly right. But still an OP. Still an OP. That'd be ideal for residential. Not sure. This um, is really... Hey, how about that? Uh, this is a Gert Kink machine, right? That is the Champ. This is the one that miraculously lowered in price? Uh, no, this is a Champ that's cheap because it doesn't have a spray system. Well, yeah, there's two new machines that uh, has been introduced by Trinity. You have the Liberty and the Champ. The Champ, which you're looking at now, uh, is basically uh, an OP without the onboard spray system. It also has a slightly tighter wheelbase, so it's easier to get upstairs. Um, seems like a good machine. I've seen quite a few videos. Uh, what, what is this, a little hydraulic piston there to lower the head or something? I don't think it's hydraulic. It's even lower. Okay. What's a machine like this weigh? Uh, good question. I think this is in the 85 to 90 pound range, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see any lever switches, anything up here. Is this an on-off toggle like switch? 85 pounds, thank you. Um, How do you turn it on? Levers down there at the bottom. They should be there. It's just a step-on lever, like a sanitaire. It's a step-on button. If I'm not mistaken. Damon, fix your mic, man. Down here. Okay, so th this is another Gary Kink machine, a Liberty. That's the Liberty. And then that's the sprayer. That has the onboard sprayer. Or an MX, or any of the other ones. Well, yeah, it's kind of like the newer generation of the MX or Grumpy. What's the difference besides its purple? Uh, well, the difference in price, about $2,000. Uh, the price is different. It's the same machine. <laughs> well, I think it has a lot of the same features, if I'm not mistaken, but it's at a, it's at a lower price. Where do, you, where, do you, where do you cut $2,000 out of the price on a machine that costs $700 to assemble? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's. A, <laughs> Discussion of want, economics. Yeah, you might not want to answer that and stay, uh, stay out of the political arena then kept cleaning. But anyways, it, it sure is pretty. Uh, it's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be doing very well, and so is the champ. This is the machine that we're giving away in Vegas next week. It's a, the most bare-bones uh, 175 Hawk. you can get. The Unipro that Hawk. Is a, and, that uh, is a Hawk. Uh, should be on every truck out there, including Sager's. But you might, again, you might need to get a third truck. But there's there's a lot. I, got, I can do, do that. You can start a heaven's best franchise and make millions. That's right. Yeah. We're in God's country up here. <laughs> uh, I guess that's it. That's all the machines you sent me there, Damon. Very cool. Yeah, that's, that's the update. newest uh, roundup or actual lineup. I should say. Yeah. Well, I wonder if there'll be anything new on the uh, the low moisture arena at the big show next week. I haven't I haven't heard anything low moisture wise. Uh. You'll be there, running around. You're I'll probably... be there. I'll be on the panel with uh, Mark up there, along oh, with right. uh, Mason. Yeah, we're gonna have the, uh, the the online education hour with with you and myself and Sager and Mason and I don't know if Joel Riggs ever decided to come or not. Uh, and just we're gonna be talking about how to use the internet to better your business because there's a whole lot of people that go to the, the experience that have. No idea you can go online and talk about carpet cleaning with your peers, so that'll be a, a cool opportunity. Red mentioned a new machine. He's right. There's going to be the Padman, which is a... Um, Am I missing out on some conversation here? Yeah, well, you mentioned the Padman. That's a new variation on the Eraser, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Fred? It's going to have a similar to the Eraser with... Yeah. The eraser is the, the big giant one I was showing right. earlier, right? The Sager right. Killer. mini eraser. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. And that one's uh, going to be debuted at the uh, BLM training session next week. BLM training session. What is that? That's going to be up in uh, Salt Lake City. What is it? It's going to be a uh, BLM training session. It's going to be uh, some low moisture guys getting together, and I think they're cleaning the hotel. And... Uh, I don't know how many will be in attendance, but we're going to have uh, some different tools out there. And some guys Is out there more than one uh, supplier vendor involved, or just... Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's Trinity sponsored. Oh, so it's a, a Trinity. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. 
How many people are going to that? I have no idea. I know one guy going. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be some. That to remember. Okay. Hey, Mark, can you put uh, Sager sauce in a, uh, a tank sprayer and spray and scrub and run, or would you leave the carpet all blue at the end of the day? Uh, I don't think you'd have that color issue, but I honestly don't know. Um, well, you left I, it behind in that shotgun glass, and it didn't leave any kind of yeah. residue, right? And I did. I, I did it the other day. I've got them out here, two shot uh, glasses, and I, um, you know, got them filled up, let them sit a while. And then I also took and I drained them out and left them upside down. And I've got absolutely nothing in it on the glass at all. It's I so... I just haven't tested with it, but uh, I suspect you can, Mike. It doesn't have any encapsulating properties, but... Um, no, a lot of uh, shampoos don't, and they work just right. fine. You don't necessarily yeah. need that plastic polymer in there to uh, leave a residue-free yeah. cleaning. It ju you just won't see that. Mm -hmm. that uh, Damon, how do you call it? The extended uh, stay clean factor? Soil inhibitors? Yeah. Soil inhibitors, right. yeah. Like that one? I yeah. just don't... I do want to try it, to be honest. I do, do want to try it. Um, so I need to get some stuff out here in the shop to test, you know, on some rugs as we're coming in and out, too, just to get an idea and comparative. But I suspect it can be done. I know, you know, um, I'm not saying we're Procyon because it's really not that. It's different. But uh, Procyon, you can also um, scrub yeah, and run with, so to speak. There. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's not a bad selling point to any chemical, yeah. any cleaning yeah. agent. If it leaves zero residue and makes the carpet look better, doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't attract, then uh, I don't see why. Well, you it's could, the uh, new soil suspending agents in it, and the water conditioners in the, our new product is what the kind of the huge thing is. I mean, it's a it's a one of a kind kind of deal. So, um, but again, I I haven't had the opportunity to test, so I don't want to say it will invalidate it, but I'm. If somebody tests it for me and tells me it's awesome, but I mean, I don't want to put somebody in that charge either of, you know, but it could happen. I mean, I've heard of other cleaning agents being used in that fashion, and it was because the crew didn't know they weren't supposed to. So <laughs> I've heard those stories. Well, but to be clear about one thing really quick, that next week, that training event, they're going to have a lot of machines there. It's not just Trinity. I mean, you'll apply that. Yeah, I saw that. That's, that's good. Yeah. Right, he's better. Uh, but yeah, what is encapsulation? Does does the, you know to, to qualify a, ch a chemical? Is there a, you know, a certification body that does some kind of testing to make sure that the leftover soil particles are are now encapsulated in the you know? M I know of no independent governing body other than a cleaner yeah. putting in a petri dish and doing his own testing. It's such a buzzword that you know anybody can throw it on yeah. the jug, and, and who's going to question it? You know. Well, you should question it. I mean, every cleaner should take the time and test their ring caps. It's not mm -hmm. hard to do. Yeah. But, um... Nothing? You fade out on us, Damon? No, I'm here. Just thinking, uh, thinking about tacos. About awesome. tacos. <laughs> about it's tacos. Tuesday. I think we're all in deep thought all of a sudden. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, awesome I'm sitting here all of a sudden. Right wheels are awesome. buzzing like crazy. Yeah. So here's... Yeah. Well, I, I, I look, as I look down the list of the attendees here tonight, you know, I see more than a few of you guys that are going to be at the show next Great week. List. And we're going to have, you know, a dozen or more carpets and furniture, and we will uh, re-soil them at night. And we're going to have every tool imaginable out there, except for all the ones we posted pictures of tonight for some reason. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, if you're a cleaning nerd and you want to come try stuff out, we'll, we'll spray some Sager sauce down at the end of the night and uh, roll it out in the parking lot and see how the, the resoiling looks the next day. Maybe we can try the new, uh, what'd you name the new stuff? The I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. What'd you call it? The new one is what? Uh, it's it's uh, free, and, free, and, uh, free and clear. Free and clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is free? Is this yours? I even have to double check. That's clear? the name. <laughs> This is your Procyon? Yeah, we actually, uh, we took out the, uh, it, it, well, no, it, it, we took out the uh, the uh, the uh, scent and we took out the color. Um, so as we did more testing and as we got some things going, we found um, it's, oh, right it's now vanilla. it's qualified towards the green side yeah, as yeah. well. It's the same cleaning power. Yeah, 
yeah. And there's no chemical smell at all as we're using it as a pre-spray, which we were really, you know, surprised. I thought there'd be more. Well, Mike, you've used it too, but maybe you've got a different smeller than the rest of us did if you've come across any chemical smell spraying it down. So four-ounce sample to uh, to test, and it worked great on that half a room. Mark. <laughs> it was 20. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a five-gallon bucket then. Uh, you and Marty. <laughs> Let's face it. Most, uh, most no, we we are calling it free and clear. But uh, well, uh, one thing I want to mention really quick before this uh, wraps up, and that's something you mentioned earlier, Mikey, about IPS sprayer being under your tent. Um, that's a pretty good tool, and I think uh, anybody's at the show should make an effort to go out there and check it out. Yeah, I'm intrigued by it. It's, I like the, the pressure regulating system being built into the trigger. Um, I guess uh, I guess you, there's a way to put it just on a quart size bottle, although I imagine you suck that quart dry in a real hurry. But there's no reason. I mean, there's no DEMA valve, so you got to be using it mixed, right? Mixed the proper dilution. Correct. And your average house, you're you're putting down, I don't know, what would you say, Mark, four to five gallons of pre-spray on, on an average house? Somewhere around there? Uh, at four to one, you're saying, or just in a pure form? In a pure, pure form? form? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. In a, you know, if you were in a pump-up, you know. Yeah. Yep. Average track house around the furniture. Um, so with yeah. that IPS spray, yep. what are you going to mm -hmm. do? You're going to have like a dolly with a four-gallon, five-gallon jug on it? With a hose, is that what they're promoting? No, no, it has a thirty foot. It comes with a thirty foot hose, little PI line. Yeah, if you're going to use it for pre-spraying, the number one use in carpet cleaning. How are you going to? What kind of jug, and how are you going to move that jug you around? You use a, like a four gallon cartridge. You drop it at the in the hallway, and you can go up and down most of the halls or most of the rooms with it. That line helps thirty feet. You could use like a carpet cleaning head pack, the, the five gallon right. jug that. And hook up the hose and okay. And I can say I think it uses. I mean, from my experience so far, yeah. you're using less uh, solution with it. Um, that's what I've noticed in the last few jobs. You're using less because it puts out less. But it's, what if you want to use more? I mean, a lot of us. I'm sure Mark's same way. I like to put down a whole lot of pre spray. You know, not enough to get to the backing, but I want the I want the fiber, the dirty fiber, swimming in it. Mm -hmm. You know. Is anybody offering like an old lady hand cart that holds a, a five gallon sprayer, kind of like the old Penguin uh, Mighty type sprayers, but without the pump? No, but I'm sure you can come up with something like maybe yeah. one of those folding. Uh, I'll get on that next week. Yeah, parts. Uh, Todd brings up an drag on there and wrap a uh, bungee cord around it. Todd likes to pre-spray at four to five hundred psi. Uh, that could be a little high. You could probably get by 350 or something. But what's the PSI range on that uh, that little pump and the handle on it? If I'm not mistaken, 65. That's why you're putting down less chemical. <laughs> that's pretty. That's a light miss. That's that's what you apply protector with. It's like a multi sprayer. Yeah. 90 multi -sprayer. PSI. Yeah. 90 yeah. PSI. Fred just oh, typed. Spray with a multi sprayer. Yeah. That's 75 PSI. That's and you'd be in there all day long, closing the house down. Mm -hmm. I mean, putting down protector, generally, you know, it's a concentrated protector. You need to do, you know, two light coats with a no one tip. But unless you're running a, you know, a giant wide open tip, in which case you're going to drain those two gallons in one room. I'm not so sure this uh, IPS is the ideal tool for pre-spraying carpet anyway. Certainly uh, upholstery or protectant or... Uh, See, again, thing. this is where VLM versus everything else comes into play. I mean, 90 PSI, 65 PSI, like on the multi sprayer, that's uh, pretty ideal for your. Yeah, uh, most, yeah, I'm talking hot water perspective. If you're not able to extract, you know, what you can't VLM, then yeah, you got to hold way back, rely more on agitation than chemical. So there, there's your difference. So yeah, perfect for your market. Really. Works awesome on VLM. Works as great. Soak them and rinse with soft water. Well, I'll tell you what's cool is you have the uh, onboard tank, like on the Mighty or, or even the Trinity and Simex, etc. You can just drip, drop your line in the 
tank and just start spraying ahead. Very handy. Cool. Well, I look forward to playing with that thing there. I'm sure we can uh, wear one out, at least the battery. <laughs> I've yet to... Two batteries. Yeah. We'll make it to four hours. Yeah. All right, hey, Damon, we're almost at two hours. Uh, did you figure out a way to, to give away your, your chemical prize to the remaining uh, however many members we got? 25 members? And what was it you wanted to give away? Well, actually, Mark's going to give away one uh, jug of uh, blue stew. Blue and... stew. Okay. And here's the question, you and know, I talked about this earlier, we have a definitive answer. In what year did Mark and his high school band that he was uh, instructing, conducting, reach the uh, national finals? In what year? Oof. Wow. Wrong, Bill. Sorry. Wrong, Eric. Well, look at the numbers flying. 19, 1945, I know. <laughs> Man, Cornell get it right yet? Len Miller. No, nope. well, Cordell's okay. probably Googling like crazy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, some people are getting close. Oh, there we go. Lee Stockwell. Stockwell. Got her. Stockwell, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Lee Stockwell's the uh, winner. Okay, uh, we're going to do another one now. For, uh, we'll do a gallon of awesome in cap. I know it's kind of boring, but it works. So yeah, it's such a beloved good. product. I'm impressed. All right, well, you know how to get a hold of Mark. Mark will uh, yeah. get you your gallon of premium. Uh, Sager seven soft. and a half pounds. Almost seven pounds. and a half pounds. Yep. And it is seven and a half pounds. Well, you feel the difference. Most powder jugs are six. You pick up marks and they're, oh, something else is going on here. I think it's trumpets at the bottom. It's all the salt we add. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Damon, what kind of quiz do we got on you? Your favorite taco? Uh, taco uh, I'm going to guess how much cash I have in my wallet. I just counted it. Really? Yeah. Ah. No, no. Or cents. No. Three gallon of awesome in cap. No. Any change involved or bills? No change. These are bills. Three bucks, 45. I've done these in the Facebook group. They've gone <laughs> on for like an hour. <laughs> no, we can't have that. No, <laughs> don't get it. Fred. Don't get it. All right, guys. Okay, here's the first clue. No money. It's between 70 and 50. Oh, we'll just start counting. First one there. <laughs> Look at them go. <laughs> Dang. Holy mackerel. I didn't even know oh, the yes, server oh, could oh, keep oh, up to this. Up. 67. Who had that first? Somebody up there had that first. Oh, Give me so a second. Oh, Eric. Eric. Wow, Eric. Eric, then you're that's lucky. That's not Zipper, Eric, right? Yep. Eric. No. Eric with an extra eye. Eric yep. with an extra eye. Eric. Sorry, Bill. Bill came in like uh, 10 seconds later. Dang. Bill, I'll give you a $10 off coupon. Send Bill a worn out pad or something. All right. Congratulations. Eric, Eric, hey, Eric, do you know how to get a hold of uh, Damon on the side? Yeah, we've talked. Okay, cool. Bill's going to get $10. Man, I can't believe Stockwell guessed that. 90. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it in my planner for tomorrow morning to get it out right away. Mark, what year did you start cleaning carpet? Me? You. Oh, geez. I, I grew up with it. So, what oh, you, you mean went back in total business? Um, it was just shortly after that, like 2000, 2001. Oh. Yeah, 2001. Gotcha. You won the big prize and so enough's enough. Can't go any further, right? Yeah. Conquer the uh, well, music. yeah, it was kind of, there was too many budget cuts. <laughs> Yep, too many budget cuts started happening, and I remember the last day when they told me, You're, we're going to cut you again this year, and you guys are so awesome, you'll just keep doing it, and I remember telling them, no, I won't, and they said, yeah, you do, you don't have any choice, I said, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't buy trumpet, so you threw a tantrum and went and sucked rugs for the rest of your life, right? I did. I threw a hissy fit. For you. Yep. All right. Now look at you. On the phone all day. Family business. All the world. Yeah. All right. One hour, 55 minutes. Not bad. <laughs> talking dirty. All right. Well, I'm done talking about carpet cleaning for, for another four hours before I got to go back at it. But, uh, David, were you happy with the outcome of the show? Right. I got to call some people. Yeah, I think it came out well. I hope everybody else liked it. Awesome. 
thought it went well. What about you, Sager? Very well attended. Yeah, yeah, good. And it was a good show. And Damon is very well followed. I mean, he's, this is a good following of people that are here. And uh, there was some good information that it was very busy down in the chat thing. So good stuff happening. If you guys like what you saw, we do these webinars every so often. Um, once or twice a month. And the conversation is very much like this on Mikey's board, the world's greatest carpet cleaning forum. 